Shabbat Shalom. In our Torah portion this week, as we continue to read about the Mishkan, about the tabernacle, we're presented with one of the great questions about the realities of the Torah and of the times of the Torah. The big question is, how did they get this extraordinary job, this imposing task? How did they get it done? How did they know how to do it? We're talking about the building of the Mishkan, which required craftsmanship, which required skilled labor. We're talking about the the construction and, and the making of the, the garments that the high priest would wear. Who, who knew how to do this? This was a slave people. How did they have the know-how to walk into the wilderness, to embrace their freedom, and then to construct this majestic edifice that would be both beautiful and practical at the same time because it had to be transported from place to place. Where did they know? From where did they learn how to get this job done? Nachmanides, Ramban, has a beautiful interpretation. When the verse says, Vayavo kol isha sher nisao libo, that everyone who whose heart lifted them, they came, v'chol asher nadva rucho, everyone whose spirit was moved, to make them come and join this effort. They brought the offering for the work of the, the tent of the meeting, and for all of its service, and, and for the, the sacred, the sacral vestments, the clothing that had to be brought as well, that had to be constructed as well. And Nachmanides says on this verse, Nachmanides says, who came? There were no experts who came to, to join in the construction pro, uh, progress and process. Maimonides says, Ki lo bahem There was no one amongst them, amongst the children of Israel, who had studied from a teacher and had learned from a teacher how to, how to make these, this clothing and how to build this, uh, this structure. O bahem yadav klal, nobody had to train them. But they found in their nature that they knew how to do this. Meaning, they came into the project not with skill, not with knowledge, not with know-how, but they came with will and desire. And they found that they were able, with that alone, to find in their nature the ability to do it. What Nachmanides is saying is, is something that's true for all of us, which is that we have within our nature, we have inherent with us capabilities that we may not be intellectually aware of, but are there all along. Rabbi Abraham J. Tversky writes about this when he talks about his, his session as a, in psychotherapy that he would lead and that he would bring a, a patient to a point of, of knowing and that he would tell the patient again and again, he would tell them, you can do this, all you have to do is X, Y, or Z. And the patient would say, I, I can't do it, I can't do it. And then, at some point, there would be a breakthrough moment. And the doctor would say, this is what you have to do, X, Y, or Z. And the patient would say, well, of course I'll, I'll do that. Why have you never told me this before? And he said, sometimes we have something buried deep within our nature that comes out at the right moment and that presents itself when we most when we most need it. I share this thought because we are being called on in the world in our community to do things, to speak out, to say things, to engage in ways that maybe we never thought was part of our our nature. We didn't know that it was part of our nature. This week was was a very difficult week for our community, for the Jewish community of Montreal, because we saw behavior targeting our community that we really hadn't seen before on this level. It seems like every week there's a new threshold that's crossed, there's a new limit that, that's exceeded, and, and the group of anti-Israeli, anti-Semitic protesters who gathered outside of Jewish community buildings, including the Federation building, including the Spanish and Portuguese synagogue, and they yelled hurtful and, and genocidal wishes targeting the Jewish community and Jews. Horrific. 
and we can spend our time talking about why it's wrong. And we could find very powerful language to talk about the lies and the misguided efforts and the ignorance and the willful hatred that's, that exists in our world and that manifests itself in so many different ways, including in anti-Semitic uh, protests, anti-Jewish protests in our own city. We could spend our time focusing on that, and, and maybe that would be worthwhile. But I'd rather, in this moment of reflection on this Shabbat and before this Shabbat, to talk about our response and to talk about what it means to, to be called upon in this, in this year, in Tufshin Pei Dalit in 2024, to be called upon to respond in ways that maybe we never knew was part of our, of our nature of articulating good, of articulating what it means to, to dream and to aspire to a just society where terrorists and murderers are held to account and where Jews are allowed to live in peace in Israel and in Canada and wherever, wherever we might be. It's in our nature. It's there. And if one doesn't think they have it, well, Part of what Nachmanides, the Ramban, and our Torah teaches us is that we have to look a little bit deeper. Because within everyone who has the will and the desire is a certain degree of the skill and the know-how. And this applies in the times of the Mishkan, of the tabernacle, that they knew how to do things and craft things and mold things and manufacture things that they had been, never been trained to do. And that applies at every moment in Jewish history and in this moment as well, that we have abilities that we haven't even discovered yet. But when forced to reflect and when forced to, to look deeper and when forced to put forward that will and that desire to do good and to respond and to live in peace, that we'll find powers and strengths that, that we never imagined could have existed within each and every one of us. Wishing you a Shabbat Shalom a Shabbat of, of peace, of safety for the Jewish community and for the entire world. Shabbat Shalom.